There's a brother by the name of Rasheem Carter. And many of us don't know his name, but we should know this brother's name because the way this brother had lost his life is one of the most heinous ways that it was done by the white supremacists. Now this brother was from Fayette, Mississippi, and this brother had issues at his job and he was working for them folks. And I want you to hear what his mom has to say about some of this. And of course, Benjamin Crump is involved with it. And I tell people, you know, some people complain on Benjamin Crump, but look, as long as you got the devil running around, Benjamin Crump going to have something to do. I don't have nothing against the brother because a lot of times he brings things to light that we did not know. But let's go ahead and roll that clip. Actually told me that it was three white trucks full of white men trying to harm him, trying to kill him. And um, I told him to go to the police station and everything. He did everything that I, you know, asked him to do. They told him he couldn't stay there. Um, he didn't stay there. He texted me after he left the police department and he said that, um, mom, if something, you know, he told me we're not seeing eye to eye. My boss and I are not seeing eye to eye, eye to eye. And then he put his boss name there and he put the company name there. And he told me uh, if something happened to him, his boss was, was responsible. And he said, mama, I'm smart. He got these men trying to kill me. I told the sheriff, I said that, uh, he said, when I told him it was foul play, he said, no, uh, it's, 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 it's no foul play. Rasheem was found on November 2nd in that condition. And it wasn't even like a day before the no foul play was you know, posted on Facebook. And it wasn't until our firm and a lot of other people uh, started saying, this doesn't add up. When you look at that text message, and the fact that he was being chased, you have to investigate this. You cannot try to tell this brokenhearted mother that her son being found with his head decapitated was uh, natural because I believe as Tiffany said, he said, oh, he must have got dehydrated and passed out and animals uh, tore his body apart from one the head, the spinal cord. I mean, it makes no sense whatsoever. What sense does it make for the police to say there is no evidence of foul play? He didn't dismember himself. Yeah, that's a very poor statement by law enforcement down there in, in Mississippi because it's been four months, they really haven't been able to figure out what happened here. And at best, you know, you have wild animals and the body parts are scattered over two acres. But this is the type of case, you know, I'm team Ben Crump. You got to get the feds involved here. You got to figure out what happened because if mom is right and he was really being chased by three truckloads of white men and you have a potential motive here, you may have a hate crime, you have a murder, and if you can't figure it out, law enforcement, you got to get feds involved so they can. Y'all have to understand the reason why I call the white supremacist Satan is because no other group of people have historically in this land did the things that they have done to black people. No other group, no other group has made a covenant with Satan. And that covenant has to be with the hatred of the black man and woman of America and throughout the world. I have covered story after story after story after story of black men and black women and children that has lost their lives in heinous ways to the white supremacist. And those who don't even participate in that will give an excuse because they all in covenant and in league with the devil, those who do it and those who support it. Now this brother was being chased by three truckloads of white supremacists. He went to the Taylorsville police department, told them, Hey, my life is in danger. These dudes following me. Oh, you can't stay here. He's telling you that a crime that he's a potential victim of a crime. You supposed to go find out what's going on. But I told y'all in these little enclaves, like those the Mississippi, Alabama, these little enclaves in Louisiana, certain parts of Texas, Black people are not safe in these areas. 
It is crawling with devils, crawling with them. And the police, you you didn't go to nobody that's going to help you because the same guys in the trucks is the police. The same guys in the trucks is the DA in them small, them towns like that. The same guys in those trucks are the judges. The same guys in those trucks are your paramedics, your firefighters, all that. The same guys in those trucks. It is a dangerous thing for black people to stay in those enclaves. Black people need to be in upper centers of black people where you have backup and protection. I've always said that. It is dangerous for you to be anywhere like that. So this brother went to the police department, asked for help, said, you told him you can't stay here. And the white supremacists were still waiting for him when he got out there because they knew that was their buddies in there. They knew, oh, they're on the team. We, we just need to wait. He'll come out. They'll make sure he come out. Understand? So this brother go back out. Try to get away from these white supremacists by himself. And they get him. And they take this brother's life. Because they, listen, I told you the white supremacists feed on the pain suffering, oppression, blood, and death of black people. They get energy from that. They feed on that. This is why when you're happy, when you're successful, when you're just doing good, when we're getting along as black people in peace and harmony throughout the world, it terrifies and bothers the white supremacist because he feed on that. I told you they are devils. When I say that, I'm not saying that just to make a video. I'm telling you, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad told you, everybody told you based on what they have done. I'll be, I will be wrong to say that word if they didn't do anything. I will be wrong to say devil if they never shed black people's blood. I will be wrong to say devil if they didn't enslave black folk. I would be wrong to say devil if they didn't uh, do what they did to George Floyd or Breonna Taylor or whatever everybody else that we can talk about. Michael Brown. I would be wrong to say that. I'll be wrong to say that if they didn't do what they did to Dr. King, I would be wrong, but we have a documented history of, of innocent blood shed by, by black men and black women, innocent children that was bombed to death in the, in the church by the white supremacist. So when I, when I label them that I'm labeling as something that's accurate, what did, what did Jesus say? What the devil has come to do to kill, steal and destroy. That's what he said in the scriptures. What has these have done to black people done nothing but kill, steal and destroy. That's it. Lie cause division. So discord among the brethren. So they caught up with, with, with our brother and they severed his head. And they made sure to put that somewhere. And they not only did that, they, they, they took out his spinal cord and, and, and other parts of him and put it other places. They had his body all over the place. They just recently found another body part of this brother. And they hid this story that local media down there hid this story because if black folks would have known when this happened back in, in November, it would have been something going on. So what we want to know is who are these white supremacists in them trucks? Where are they? What's going on? Because this is one of the most heinous things I've heard in a long time. You know why I keep reporting on these things? Some of you say, why are you already reporting on that? It's because if I don't report on it, or if we don't report on it, those of us who's doing this, a lot of you would not know. A lot of you, they got black folks on the internet that will tell you, don't focus on that stuff. Y'all just acting like you're victims. And what are you talking about? That stuff was a long time ago. You got black folks that say that. Well, what about this brother then? 
This was in the 1950s. This happened in 2022, and he just found more body parts this year. What do you say to that? Those of you say, oh, you guys always want to focus on victimhood and victimhood. That brother was a victim. Should we not focus on our brother? And if it could happen to him, it could happen to you. It can happen to me. This is why I have said to y'all, you want to hunker down with the devil. You want to be ta attached to the hip to him. You want to take on his ways. You want to use his words. And I promise you, our brother, one of the last words he heard was that N word. And you got silly raccoons telling me, I disagree with you. We can say it and this and that. That brother, that was the last word that brother heard. No matter what black folks are doing in this country, they are protected. These white supremacists are protected. And the best way they are protecting themselves is doing these things and hiding it in these little enclaves. See, they can't pull that in a Houston. They pull it in Houston, look, watch what's gonna happen. Or Dallas, or in Atlanta, or Baltimore, or DC, or NYC. They could, they'll do it, but, but eventually it's gonna, it's gonna come down to something. I always told black people, you are safer when you're in enclaves of your people. These little small towns, they don't have no black people. I told you, if it's less than 10% black people in any city, you don't need to be there. If you know you stand with the most ignorant of the ignorant of white supremacists, the devil of the devils, you know this, you need to get your behind out of there and move. Get to a city where there's enough people that look like you and me. I told y'all, no matter where we go in America, we literally can't live with them. Because they're going to try to start some devilment. Even when we're getting along, doing our own thing, separate, do whatever we're doing, they're going to try to break that up. Because we all, you know, that's, that's a thing. Let's break up black people. Don't break up everybody else with just black people. That's why I said for me personally, for me personally, I'm not talking about you. Now, if you agree with my assessment, that's fine. But with me personally, I know the ultimate way to get away from the devil is not to live in the house with him. Now, sure, white supremacy is global, and people will tell you that, and I agree with that. But it's a difference living in the house of the white supremacist and having some distance from him when you're not in his house. He could touch you a lot quicker in his house than he can when he got to go on a plane or get somewhere else to get to you. You understand? It's going to cost him a little something to get to you. If he really want to get to you somewhere else. See, when you're in his house and you're in his domain and in his control, it's easy to get to you. He don't have to spend anything to get at you. That's the difference. It's like if you live in a cave with a bear, well, the bear can get at you. You're in the cave with him versus if you're in the same forest with a bear is at, well, then if the bar, if the bear come up on you, come up on you, but you can have a higher probability to avoid that bear to even maybe fight against the bear because you may even see him coming versus if you're in the cave with him and black folks are in the house with the white supremacists when you are in the Western world, especially in America, you are in the cave with him in these little small towns in, in, in Mississippi. Mississippi is one of the most numerous states of black folk and black folks are suffering the most poverty. It should not be that way. Look, all the black folks in Louisiana look and look how impoverished black folks are in Louisiana. It should not be that way. Black folks, I told you for your safety. If you go live in Babylon, get to cities where your people is at. And when you get a lot of people take control of the politics. You become the sheriff, the DA, the judge, you become the police, you become the school board, you become the teachers at the school. You, you get involved with everything and take over that city. It doesn't make sense if you got a city full of black folk and black folks don't run nothing. 
Now I'm talking about real black people, not, not, not raccoons. Just like our brother, Ahmaud Arbery, how they same thing, a truck chased him down and gunned him down. They would have got away with that. That videotape wasn't there. It's the same thing with our brother here. Remember, these people have not changed. I told you, they are not a progressive group of people. They used to sit up here and, 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 and have tickets. They would buy at their so-called demonic church to go and to watch the torture of a black man. They would bring their children to watch this. And then after the black man is, 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 is passed away, they fight for the body parts. Listen, only a devil would do that. No logical, sane human being would ever do something like that. And I wish I could show you the pictures of this stuff. Cause the pictures is out there. And today they doing the same thing. They delete a black man and look what they doing with his body parts. That's why I tell you all the things that I tell y'all. And that's why I sit up here and report what I report on for the black community. Forget all these black folks running around here talking about we don't need reparations and we not victims. We are, we are victims every day in this country. We have been victimized for hundreds of years and we not whole until we made whole. But I will tell you this, you cannot, cannot, cannot live with the devil. So if you're in one of these little small towns and you hear my, my voice, get yourself out that small town and go to the nearest city where there's a lot of black people at. I'm not saying it's going to be perfect, but you got a little bit more backup versus these little small towns that some of you are in, in Mississippi, some places in Texas. In Texas, you know where to go. You need to be in Houston or Dallas if you're black. Not San Antonio. No. There's a lot of racism toward black folks in San Antonio. Black folks in San Antonio know what I'm talking about. The cities we supposed to be in is either Houston, the surrounding areas of Houston, surrounding areas of Dallas. If you're gonna be in Texas. You know, Georgia, we're talking about Atlanta, the surrounding areas. You know that. Outside of Atlanta and those areas, you, you already know. Clan Central. You know that. We're gonna have to put that all back together again in some books and tell black people where to go. We got to say, hey, don't go here. Don't go there. Don't fool with this town. Hey, there's a bunch of white supremacists in this town. We got to get back to that because they had a green book back in the day and they didn't have the internet. How come we don't have that today? It's so much easier to compile information now versus back then. We need to get back to a green book and an a updated green book every three months updating. But y'all let me know about, you know, what y'all think about this situation with our brother here. Our brother suffered a horrible, horrible death. But we got to keep, even though this stuff is, 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 is hard and dealing with your mental health and all of that, we still got to, we got to, got to let the public know what happens because something needs to happen and we need to keep up with this story.